Hey guys, welcome back to the joy of wrenching. I'm your friendly neighborhood mechanic and today in the shop we've got this 2006 Chevy 3500. It's got the big 6.6 Duramax in it and it's throwing a code for a turbo position vane position sensor. Turbo vane position sensor. So I wanted to walk you guys through the process of one, finding that part, and then testing that part, and then, if necessary, replacing that part. So come along and let's get into it. Okay, so here's where the vane position sensor lives on this Duramax engine. Right back here, behind the uh, this this breathing baffle and back behind there okay you see this right here with this heat shield on it that's the vane position sensor you'll have to remove that heat shield and also remove this breather in order to get back there so this thing comes off pretty easily it's just got a uh, hose clamp holding here and then this one screw in the front that has a uh, torque set on it. So once you get that thing out of the way, you'll see you've got really good access back here to your vane position sensor, and you can cut this stuff off, this heat shield, and now you can see that that thing's got a hex, hex head on it, and that is a one inch, okay guys, one inch hex. Now, don't go thinking that it's gonna be super easy here to just go ahead and get on that with a regular wrench. I'll show you here have to put this thing down so that I can get in there but I'm going to show you with a regular wrench one inch wrench that you just don't there's not enough room around it to really loosen it up so what you need to get in order to make this job easier on yourselves is one of these sensor removal tools okay this is a one inch specifically for that sensor and what it allows you to do is go right over the top of right over the top of that wire and everything sit down on it and then you can put a 3 8 drive in it and break it loose just like that once it's broke loose the thing should spin out pretty easily you just turn this thing just like that but don't neglect picking up one of these things I'll put a link down in the description to this. This will make your life a whole lot easier. So the other end of your vane position sensor is this wire, which will snake down through here and then come in right here underneath this coolant pipe and plug into the harness. You see the harness, I've already unplugged it down there. It's real easy to get this thing unplugged. And if yours is like mine, these uh, little connectors that hold it down here will already be broken. And there it is. Okay. So this is what it looks like. Let's see if I can get you in the sun a little bit. It's got a little plunger on it. You can push down. And that's riding, and you can see that wear mark. That's been riding on top of the, uh, the, uh, the inside guts of that turbo. Okay, guys. So now that we have the old vane position sensor out what we want to do is we want to test it and see if it's working or not these things are really expensive so you don't want to replace a part that's not actually broke the way to test it is to get yourself a uh, a scan tool of some kind that uh, will allow you to to test or actuate different things and uh, on this particular car we're going to go into powertrain this but what we want to do is we want to look at some live data so we're going to go into the engine data turbocharger data and we want turbocharger vane position control let's see vane position sensor and we want desired turbocharger vane position sensor all right and then we'll go okay all right so here's what here's what we've got in here and hopefully this is coming through this top says turbocharger vane position sensor is at zero and the turbocharger vane position sensor is at 21. That top one is the desired. So right now it's desired to show zero. And the bottom one is the actual. So right now it's saying that I'm, 
that this sensor is, is delivering 21% of its movement range. And watch what happens when I put my finger on here and push it down. Look at that. I can make that go down to basically zero, pushing it all the way in, that little, that little tip right there. But when it comes out, it only goes up to 21%. Again, I'll push it down, down to zero. And again, hopefully this is in clear. And then when I let go of it, it goes up to 21. Now, let's try and flick it a little bit. Maybe it'll release it some. No, 21 is as high as it goes. So um, it should go from zero, fully depressed, to 100, fully out. But this one's going to 21. So let's plug in the new one and see what it reads. Okay, so I've got my new vein position sensor plugged in, and then I've pulled up the live data, and look at that. The desired is zero. The uh, sensor right now is currently reading 100%. It's fully out. Now watch what happens as I push it in. Okay, going down, 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 all the way to zero. So this one, when you let go of it, goes all the way back to, to 100. Remember the original one, the one that uh, supposedly is bad, uh, only went up to 20%. So this one is at least going to 100%. So that's good. All right, so when I took out the old vein sensor, put a little something in there just to keep some trash from falling inside the turbo. Now to reinstall the vein position sensor, all you got to do is just screw it into the hole. No big deal. Uh, one thing you want to do though is, unlike when we, we took it out, we do not want this cord to get all tangled up. So we're going to leave the cord detached and twist it along with the sensor here as we screw it in. Now we'll be able to screw it in all the way by hand until it gets tight and then we're going to take our special uh, vein position sensor socket again there'll be a link to this in the description and you want to slide that over the wire and then down onto the sensor and then you put your regular 3 8 ratchet on there snug it up that's it now it comes with a heat shield to wrap around it and so I'm gonna go ahead and get that and put that on there and then we're gonna snake this cord down through out of the way the way it kind of was and then plug it back in okay so now we've got her plugged back in you follow that white wire now down to where it is attached to that bracket by those little blue tabs on the back of it okay that's where the old one is uh, located and that's where the new one is plugged in now we're ready to put our heat shield on top of uh, and around that sensor and then we can put the uh, the air baffle back in place okay so the heat shield that comes with the uh, new sensor is kind of like a, a sticker so you just peel it off and it says to just wrap it around the sensor okay let's try and get that done the best we can here just wrap this reflective sticker basically around that sensor okay just like that it's kind of like duct tape almost but reflective and then you just kind of bunch it up near the top of the sensor hopefully you guys can see that and got wrapped around kind of squeezing it on there it's got a little bit of stick -em on it you know and so it's kind of stays in place a little bit but not it won't stay in place forever so the kit comes with this little metal band we need to strap around there next okay so here's the little stainless steel band it's kind of like a zip tie made out of stainless steel and it says that we're supposed to wrap this around this sensor to hold this heat shield in place so we're going to go ahead and try and get this thing put in here and it just sort of slides in there and then we're going to Position it kind of halfway down and try to take up the slack like a zip tie would There we go kind of see what I'm doing hopefully and uh, and then we'll pull pull the slack I'll zoom you in here in a second We'll pull the slack 
as best we can. I'm going to use some dikes here, a little cutting, side cutting pliers, and pull that slack through that zip tie as best I can, just like that. That keeps it in place. Then you can cut off the excess. Sometimes they say, you know, fold it back first and all this other stuff. That way it can't, can't bend up, can't come undone and then uh, cut off the excess. So we'll go ahead and do that. There we go. Now that thing won't come off. So there's a close up look of what the thing looks like with its little strap and heat shield on there. And again, it just sort of snakes around down here and plugs into the harness. And now we're ready to put our air baffle back on and test and see if we got a good fix. Okay, put her all back together, just put the uh, air baffle back on. It's held on with this little worm clamp over here, eight millimeter there, and this one little screw, it's a T30 Torx bit that fits that. Um, now we're ready to go test drive it. So we're on our test drive and here's what you want to look for is that your desired and your vein position sensor are the same or very close to the same. And they are. So everything seems to be working as it should. These were off before we did this repair. Well, that's it, guys. Pretty easy job. You know, just unscrew the old one, test it out with a scan tool that lets you see the live data. Um, if you like the scan tool that I use, I highly recommend it. I've been really uh, happy with it. It's a launch die gun, and it's just kind of like a cell phone size Bluetooth. You can carry it around with you and turn things off and on, uh, look at live data, clear codes, all of that good stuff really powerful and it works on all kinds of cars i'll put a link to the i'll put a link in the description to that if you're interested in that um, make sure you get one of those sensor removal sockets because a regular wrench will not fit in there and let you get that vein position sensor out of there uh, also there will be a link in the description to that other than that um, it's it's a plug and play sort of process and uh, the as i showed you know, went for a test drive everything's working fine no more uh, error codes, no more check engine light. The EGR codes didn't come back, so that must have been related to the turbo vane position uh, being out of whack. Um, so hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Uh, if you enjoy this sort of thing, I really appreciate if you hit that subscribe button. It helps me to reach a greater audience and help more people. I, want, I, uh, I also appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this today. And uh, y'all have a wonderful day, and God bless.